10:15. We're back it's Tuesday morning here on Breakfast Television. Uh, a special Tuesday because the hashtag is Giving Tuesday. And Kate and Brian Chong are here. I see the shirts. How about giving the gift of life? Welcome to you both. Thank you, uh, Dr. Jag Gill here as well. And we're talking about the idea of transplants and uh, living organ transplants. Kate, take us back to 2011, uh, stage five kidney disease. When did you ultimately discover something was wrong? Uh, yeah, it was January 2011, and unfortunately, I was just not feeling very well and ended up at the hospital with high blood pressure. And they said, oh, do you have issues with your kidneys? And I said, no, nope. kind of what do my kidneys do again? And unfortunately, went into um, went to Surrey Memorial, and I was very close to needing dialysis at that time, but with medication and um, and uh, lifestyle changes, I was able to increase my function for about uh, close to six years until earlier this year, and then it started to decline because of a med change. And uh, so we started the process of uh, a living kidney donor, and uh, that's where we got to this fall when we had surgery. And we would be you and? My husband, Brian. <laughs> Brian, and you're stepping in here. How long did it take to determine if you could be a perfect match to give one of your, uh, your kidneys here? Uh, from start to finish, it took about five months or so to go through the whole testing process. It was a bit of here, bit of there, some questionnaires. It was it was a good process overall, nice and quick overall. And I've heard I was kind of the norm for it, so it was a great two-month pro well, two process. It's a great story to hear that you could help each other out. Oh and, and Dr. Gill, when you look at the need that exists here in BC, here in Canada, how common are these surgeries, <coughs> and uh, how great is the need that exists here in our country? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the need is is actually quite large. There's about forty thousand Canadians that have kidney failure uh, and in BC we know there's roughly 500 people that are on a wait list for some sort of an organ so the need unfortunately is really quite dramatic um, the you know we're fortunate to have people that are able to come forward and help you know, in these scenarios and we do close to 300 uh, kidney transplants in, in Vancouver, in British Columbia. Um, and, and about you know, a third of those are because of people like Brian who have come forward who are alive and donate one of their uh, kidneys to a loved one. What is the real difference to say a living uh, organ donor versus the deceased uh, donation of how that impacts long-term health in, in cases like this? So it's definitely preferred for, for the person who's receiving the transplant. It's definitely better to get a kidney from someone who's alive. Um, and that's partly because, as Brian alluded to, there's a lengthy process to make sure Brian's going to be okay in his life with one kidney. So a nice byproduct of that is that the person receiving the kidney gets a kidney that's also exceptionally well suited for them and it lasts much longer. And this surgery for you, you two, this happened in September. Yeah, we're not quite three months post-surgery, so we feel so fortunate that, you know, the process went, I think, as best as it could have. Uh, we had a generally good, you know, there's your typical post-surgery recovery things, but overall it was been really good and I feel way more amazing than I did prior to. And is it true, Tanya, from BC Transplant came out, you're kickboxing now? Is that, is that <laughs> I'm fresh uh, just in the last couple of weeks. I've been what? to a few classes. So <laughs> this, is, this is remarkable. But Brian, take us through this. The emotion of the night before you're going to have this surgery, obviously a huge impact on, on both of your lives. Yeah. Uh, what was the feeling like when you knew you're going to go through this and share such an important experience? Uh, there was a lot of nerves uh, from for both Kate and myself. Um, but it was a lot of excitement to know that our next day would be the beginning of our future together and her in a healthy position. Reality post-surgery now, what type of medication do you have to take? What is the commitment to a healthy uh, state of living now? Yeah, so definitely there are a few anti-rejection drugs that I need to be on um, and then just general healthy living, making sure eating well, staying um, healthy and fit and that sort of thing. And uh, you know, we have a great, uh, Dr. Jay Gill is uh, one of my nephrologists and so they take great care of us at St. Paul's Hospital. And so we get great care and it's amazing just the difference that we've seen in the last couple months and being able to move forward, so. So what is your message from the two of you, and Jag will get your thoughts on this sure. too. For anybody considering the idea of, of donating an organ, well, what perspective do you want to give them about this experience? Yeah, that, you know, I, I think Brian can speak to it better, but, you know, it just makes such a life difference in someone. And, you know, for us, we're able to go and, and live our life now as best as we can. And, you know, it, it literally is saving someone's life. And so if, if anyone's willing to do it or interested in it, there's lots of information through BC Transplant that they can go forward and, and uh, see what the process is all about. Brian? For myself, it was I was able to chat with a few donors prior to surgery and, and I asked them the question, would you donate again? And every single one of them said yes and at this point in time for myself, I can easily say, if I could, <laughs> you need I, would, one. I only had one. You need that one kidney um, now. But I would give the gift life again. 
Well, it's a beautiful gift. It's a beautiful story. And, Jag, for anybody that uh, wants to get involved, the criteria that you look at to say, yes, you're eligible to participate, what, what, what is that? Yeah, I mean, I think to be a living donor, you obviously have to be in pretty good health uh, you ha because the primary process there is for us to make sure that someone who's going to donate in, in their kidney and give a life like this is actually going to live a long, healthy, successful life themselves. Um, but I think there's a lengthy process that we go through to ensure that that safety exists. So my, my thought, my advice to people and, and, and kind of request is to just consider it. Really, the only thing you have to do is have the thought, come to the professionals, we'll go through everything and, and make sure that it's not going to be harmful and it's the right thing for you. Well, your courage is an example to follow. Uh, Dr. Gill, thanks for being here. Kate Bryan, congratulations Thank and you. continued health and, and success. I love the shirts. Thank <laughs> the best gift ever. Uh, Transplant.bc.ca is the website to find out more, uh, more of your top news stories right now.